Hello coders, today we're going to be taking a look at a very interesting RFC proposed for PHP 7.4. Now this RFC is titled Typed Properties 2.0. Let's go and dive straight into the browser and take a look at what this is all about. Now the introduction here um, says, with the introduction of Scalia types, and return types, PHP 7 greatly increased the power of the PHP type system. However, it is currently not possible to declare types for class properties, forcing developers to instead use getter and setter methods to enforce type contracts. This requires unnecessary boilerplate, makes usage less ergonomic and hurts performance. This RFC resolves this issue by introducing support for first class property type declarations. So this is actually quite a substantial change. This is a quite a big change in how we could use or create PHP classes. And if we scroll down here, we can see that this is just a typical class. You have uh, the class of user, it has a private property of ID and also name, passing that into the constructor here, uh, like so. You have uh, your setting this, so this ID equals ID, this name equals name. All of this here, the getters and setters, this can be uh, construed as boilerplate code. Because why would you need to get and set things all the time if you've just got a constructor? Surely that is that is good enough. Obviously, that's different for different use cases. And I can think of loads of places that just has in loads of my projects that just have this boilerplate stuff where I'm just wanting to get and set things. So, for example, with uh, Symfony, with Laravel, you have like obviously the model layer of the MVC. And in that layer, the model layer, you'll have a lot of getters, a lot of setters that set and get the entity properties. So you would instantiate a new entity. So you would pull it out of the database and then you would hydrate that through getters and setters. Yes, there is an argument there about using that. So some of that is good, especially if you're doing joins and stuff and you want to manipulate how things are added or removed from the collection. Sure, but half the time it's pretty much just getting and setting values. So this is an interesting, it's an interesting change that uh, will have an impact to perhaps things like that, but also just generally an impact to how we create our classes. And this RFC, this typed uh, declarations for properties, this has actually been bounded around before. And I'll talk about the differences between the previous RFCs and this one in just a second. Let's scroll down a little bit further and we can actually see what is going on here. That now changes, that whole class now changes to this, which is extremely simple, right? It's only a couple of lines of code, whereas that was a, an actual file. So here we've got, um, we have set these to public, which means that we can now do uh, this ID equals ID and this name equals name. But look, we've also enforced the property declarations. So int and string. We can force them up here, int and string, but we can't force them up here. We can only document them. We can only do at var int and at var string. We haven't enforced this at all. But in this, this new world with this new RFC installed in PHP 7.4, we can do so. So now we're going to talk about the main differences between the previous proposal and this proposal. Um, there are two main distinct differences. First of all, uh, types on static properties are supported. Support for static property types was not included in the previous RFC due to implementation issues creating an inconsistency in language. Under the new proposal, type declarations may be added to static properties with the same semantics as for normal properties. So here we're talking about obviously the static properties. And in the previous RFC, there was, wasn't any support for that. And if you're going to play around with properties, you kind of need to do it as a global thing. Whatever you change to just normal private, um, public and protected properties, you want to also enforce that to other properties like 
uh, static properties and so on. Let's scroll down a little bit here. The next one is references. So references to typed properties are supported. The previous proposal did not permit references to be typed properties due to the difficulty in enforcing the type if the property is modified. This is what I'm reading off here, indirectly through the reference. The proposal allows taking references to typed properties and will enforce the declared type even if the modification happens through the references. So that's pretty awesome. That references, um, typed references are now supported, which is pretty awesome. And again, these two factors weren't enforced, weren't supported in the previous RFC, and therefore this is the next iteration of that. This is what I like about the community. You you, you propose a, a, a thing and then people vote on it, people ask if it can be tweaked and changed, and you end up with something that is that is benefiting and taking into account all sorts of, of, of different issues. Let's scroll down here. So this is the proposal. So here we have a set of properties in this example, and here we've got that set to integer. This is a class name, so the property itself can be another class, obviously, if you're injecting that in. And then here with the um, the, um, the question mark, that is a nullable, a nullable class name. So that can be that could be set to null if needed. Um, and again, here is how you would have a string which could be null, and here we're setting that to be a nullable string as well. And also you've got floats and you've got other bits and pieces. And again, this is the uh, static, it's, it is iterable. It's a static property. So let's continue down the road here, and we can see that, that these supported types are, uh, are listed, including the null, as I mentioned, uh, like so. This is going to change, I think, a lot of things. This is going to not only change how code uh, behaves in the sense of how it is, it, it behaves in perhaps an IDE. So an IDE will be able to pick these things up quicker. So this may even change things like debugging, right? So it, a debugger would be able to identify what the uh, the property should be typed as, right? And it's also going to be changing um, documentation, how we document the code, how automated documenters are going to pick up this kind of stuff. Um, and it's going to be changing how we as developers actually code these things, because now we can actually declare what these things should be. And we are basically enforcing, restricting ourselves far more on whether it should be, you know, a particular type. There are so many projects that I've worked on in my lifetime where a property has been at least three or four completely different values at any point in the given time. I'm talking about crazy legacy projects here. Now we're saying that this has to be a particular type. Here we're talking about strict uh, typing modes, different typing modes and so forth. Um, down here, Ah, this is, this is the bit I want to get to. Inheritance and variance. So you can, you can inherit, you can well, class inheritance. You can obviously inherit one class to another. And you also must keep consistency between typed um, properties. So here we've got class B, which extends class A. So class A has a private Boolean uh, variable A, and here we're, we're trying to change that to be um, a, a string. And this is legal because this is a public property for this class. This is a private property for this class. However, we can't go ahead and change the integers um, from from these two because these are public, right? So these this is an illegal. We can't just say that this here is nullable as well as an integer. It is illegal because we must have or or um, be enforced by whatever we are extending from, right? So this you could call it a concrete class, base class, whatever. This has to be an integer. Okay, it can't be nullable. It has to be an integer. So we can't change that to be a nullable integer. Likewise, we can't change this one here, variable C. We can't change that to just be an integer because in the base class, it is a nullable integer. 
So that won't work. And let's see if we scroll down here, we can uh, we can also have a look at some more uh, examples. So this is how we can uh, use traits. That's quite interesting too. Uh, we can also supply default values, obviously, to these kind of things. Um, and yeah, I. I, I'm actually looking forward to this. This, like I said, is um, in its voting stage. So there could be a possibility that it doesn't go through, but I think it will. I think that there's a lot of support for this. I think because it's gone through the motions before and now it supports static and uh, references, I think it's going to be fantastic. And I do believe that this may change um, a lot of code that I write and a lot of code that I depend on by other people as well. Um, down here we can see uh, how we can unset um, properties, overload properties. What I'll do is I'll provide a link in the description in the show notes to this RFC. I, if you are a PHP developer and you are in the process of upgrading your PHP version, obviously PHP 7.4 is not out at the time of recording this, but it's very worth it to have your eye on the ball when it comes to these new things coming through. Because obviously you're going to, you're working on a project and that project may be, you might be working halfway through that when this drops. So you might pick this up. You might want to start thinking about how you're coding now to be compatible with all of these changes. So do, do check out the RFC. So that is the RFC. Those are the changes that may be coming through. I'm interested to hear what you guys think. Is this a good move for PHP? Should PHP be having these declared types in class properties? I personally think this is a good idea. I think this is a move in the right direction, but I'm interested to hear what you guys think. Put your thoughts down in the comment section below. If you haven't done so already, please do subscribe because on this channel, we have a tutorial every Tuesday, every Wednesday, I do a live stream and on a Friday, we do a discussion like this. Thanks ever so much for watching. Happy coding everyone. See you again soon. Cheers. Bye.